Hello and welcome to the Monday Market Update with me, Dave Madden. Today's date is Monday the 2nd of July and the time has just gone 11.55 British summer time. Uh, the big news in the last few days has been uh, in- increased uh, or increased worries in relation to the state of global trade uh, and also political in- uncertainty in Germany. So European equity markets are very much in the red over fears that the heightened trade tensions between the United States and essentially the rest of the world, but uh, China, uh, the, um, the European Union and also uh, Canada and Mexico is actually genuinely going to actually impact growth negatively. Uh, so we saw a major sell-off in Asian equities overnight and that sell-off is actually, sp- that negative sentiment has spilled over into European sessions today. Adding to the to the political uncertainty, uh, adding to the, the selling pressure is uh, increased political uncertainty out of Germany. Uh, Angela Merkel is head of the CDU, the Christian Democratic Union, uh, and her party is in coalition with the, with their Bavarian sister party, the CSU, the, uh, uh, the the Christian Social Union, and that's headed by a politician called by Horst Seehoff. And uh, Mr. Seehoff has been a very outspoken critic um, of Angela Merkel's uh, migration policy, and has actually offered to resign. Uh, that, that could lead to the the breakup of the, of, the, of that coalition government, and some traders are even speculating it could be the beginning of the end uh, of Angela Merkel. So there's been additional additional selling pressure uh, in, in European equities on account of that. So taking a look now at the week ahead, which can be found on the news and analysis section of our website. Uh, looking ahead at the kind of major uh, economic and macro events of the, of the week week coming. Uh, on Wednesday, we have the PMI services figures for the, Euro, for, the, for the UK and the Eurozone, also the individual reports for France and Germany. Uh, on Thursday, we have the, uh, the Federal Reserve minutes. And this is the minutes from last month's meeting where we saw the Federal Reserve hike interest rates by 0.25%. And traders are going to be looking at these, at these minutes to try and ascertain how hawkish the Fed are, are going to be. Uh, there's a speculation we could have two more rate hikes from the Federal Reserve this year, but there's also some traders believe we, 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 we may only get, in fact, one rate hike uh, from the Federal Reserve. On Thursday, we have a couple of companies that are listed in London, which have pulled your figures out. The first one is Superdry, the, the fashion house, and the second one is Purple Bricks, uh, the online estate agent. And on Friday uh, is when the United States uh, intends to slap on tariffs on $34 billion worth of Europe. $34 billion worth of Chinese imports. And this would be seen as a kind of ratcheting up uh, of, of trade tensions. And this is in part why equity markets are, are in the red today, because uh, the fear is that we're getting closer and closer to kind of a more escalated uh, trade dispute or possibly into an actual, an actual trade war. So that, that's continued to be the pressure. Who knows between now and then, we, the, the, the situation may be resolved. Uh, but, but for the time being, those imports, those levies are set to be, uh, set to be slapped on come Friday. So taking a look now at some of the popular markets, starting off with the FTSE 100. Like I said, uh, European equity markets are in the red. Uh, after hitting an all-time high uh, in May, the FTSE 100 has been in a bit of a downtrend, and a downtrend is defined as a series of lower lows and lower highs. And what, that's, that's precisely what we've seen in recent weeks. So after hitting an all-time high here on the FTSE 100, we saw a lower low, a lower high, a lower low another lower high, and we're heading back down again. So if we take out this low here, we, we, we create another lower low. So keep an eye out for the recent low of 7,482. If we go south of that, we may, we, may, we, may, we may see the market target, this red line here, the truly moving average, which comes to play at 7,452, or perhaps even as low as this yellow line here, the 100 moving average, which comes to play at 70, 7,405. Any moves to the upside may run into resistance in around this area at 7,700. And if we go beyond that, resist- resistance may come into play at 7,749. It's a, a similar picture over in Germany that has been effectively losing ground in recent weeks. Uh, but it's actually the sell off is a bit more severe on the German market, like, like I said, for various different trade and political reasons. So if we take a look at the German market, we can see that the high of June failed to take off the high of May, which is a bit telling in itself. Uh, and then since mid-June, the market, the, the DAX has been in a fairly clear and aggressive downward trend. And as the market's been pushing uh, to the downside, we've seen a steady increase in negative momentum at the MACD indicator, the MACD histogram. So the negative move has been confirmed by the increase in negative momentum. So the seller, the, the, the pressure and the momentum is with the seller, the seller for the time being. Keep an eye on this area here. We've seen a lot of consolidation on this, this region uh, of 12,123. If it continues to push lower from here, um, we could, we, that'll be the creation of a new multi-month low. We could see the market heading back down towards uh, 12,000 or perhaps even down as low as the, 
well, the lows of the year really, in around 11,692. Moves to the upside, uh, may find resistance in this area here of 12,600. It has acted at both support and resistance in recent weeks. And if it's done, and if it's acted at support and, resist, and resistance recently, it makes them more likely that it will do in the near future. Uh, and the move beyond that, we may find resistance come into play at 12,785. This red line here, the 30-day moving average. Uh, the American markets, uh, the Dow Jones, uh, are, is also um, has also been selling off recently, not to the same extent uh, as it has in Europe, um, but still things are looking uh, looking to the downside over in the US. So as we can see here, uh, the Dow hit a multi-month high in mid June, but has been pretty much selling off fairly consistently ever since then. Uh, and if you note, apologies, that that's the, the S&P 500. Apologies for that. Looking at the Dow Jones. So the Dow Jones hit a multi-month high uh, in mid-June, but notice how it's been in a fairly obvious, uh, it's been losing ground uh, for the past few weeks. And as you can see, there's been a steady, a steady uh, decline in the market, uh, confirmed by a steady increase in negative momentum. So the Dow is pushing lower, increase in negative momentum and the MACD indicator. So, it's been so the, the, the bearish move is being confirmed by the steady rise in negative momentum. So we, we may see this, this negative move last. While we remain south of the trailing moving average, this red line here, which comes to play at 24,390, it's likely the outlook for the Dow will remain negative. Uh, it continues to push on lower from here. We could look, we could look at retesting 24,000, or perhaps even as low as this, this trend line here. And obviously, the, the rising trend line, trend line support um, from February. So it could come, now come into play in around 23,900, there, thereabouts, or perhaps even in low. Uh, in, in that kind of area, there's that, that's a keep, keep an eye out for that because this this trend line has acted as a, a support uh, on a few occasions, so it may do it again in the near future. Moves to the upside on the Dow Jones uh, may run into resistance at this line here, which was where the 50 day moving average, the blue line, and the 100 day moving average, the yellow line, converged. This area here at 24,639, and if you go beyond that, we could be looking at retesting 25,000. Take a look now at what's going on in the gold market. Uh, gold has been not too far away, has been in a downward trend since April. As you can see here, this is a classic example of a downward trend. So if you could take a look at the April high, and then we're pushing lower here, a lower low, a lower high, a lower low, a lower high, and another lower low. In fact, the lows we saw last week were actually uh, fresh six month lows uh, on the gold market. Negative momentum is, is still, still remains to be high, so it's still very much in a downward trend. If you take out the recent low of 12.46, or it's not quite the low, but that area is, is an area for consolidation. If you take out 12.46, that consolidation area, we could be looking heading back down towards the December low of 12.36. Most of the upside in gold may run into, re in, into resistance at 12.61, and if we go beyond that, we could be looking at resistance in at 12.84. Uh, but it's only when we'd actually take out the, uh, the, the, the late June high, of, uh, of of 1309 uh, would would then be actually look, look to actually be be, be more confident uh, that gold is about to shake off the recent negative trend. Sticking with the commodities team, we'll now take a look at the uh, the oil market. First one to look at is Brent crude oil. And the oil market has well, Brent crude oil is not too far away from its May highs, uh, which were actually in fact multi-year highs. Uh, notice how the market, the, the, the Brent market, has, has, has rebounded in recent weeks, as that that's been confirmed by a steady increase in positive momentum. So the market is pushing higher. Negative positive momentum is on the increase. So things are looking looking quite bullish. Remain to be looking quite bullish for for the uh, for, for Brent crude oil. If we need to push on higher from here, we could be looking at targeting eighty dollars a barrel, and then beyond that up towards eighty spot eighty nine, the recent high, the May high. And if we go beyond eighty spot eighty nine, we could be looking at targeting eighty one spot fifty three. Moves to the downside or any kind of pullbacks in Brent crude may find some support coming into resistance at 77 spot 5 or this blue line here, the 50 moving average at 76 spot 48. WTI is actually had a better run recently. It's actually went, gone on to, to hit a fresh 40, 43 month highs. Uh, so so the, the high in June actually has comfortably taken out the high in May. So now we're not too far away. We're not off uh, four, uh, 43 month highs on WTI, which gives indication of how bullish things are on the WTI market. So the market's been pushing higher. We've seen a steady increase in positive momentum. So it's likely that this uh, upward bullish move will continue. 
support could come into play uh, in around the 72 spot 79 or 72 50 area uh, possibly even as low as $70 a barrel but if this wider upper trend continues we could be looking at targeting $75 a barrel or 76 77 you know these are the big psychological numbers to keep an eye out for take a look now on some of the currency markets at the euro versus the US dollar euro dollar has been in a fairly obvious and a clear downward trend since April uh, the market is not too far away from, from, from multi-month lows, but ultimately it's been in a classic downward trend. We're seeing a bit of consolidation in around here. Um, the one, fifth, one spot, 15, 10 area seems to be acting as a support for the time being. If you manage to break below that, we could be looking at getting back down towards 114. If you can hold north of one spot, uh, 15, 10, there's a possibility we could look at a retesting uh, this area here, uh, one spot, 18, 51. And if you go north, north of that, we could be looking heading back up towards the 120 area. And lastly, taking a look at the pound versus the US dollar. Similar to the euro dollar, the pound has been losing ground versus the US dollar since April. Once again, it's been in a classic uh, example of a downward trend, higher highs and higher lows. Uh, for the time being, uh, if you, or it's, just, it's just about holding, it's holding, it's holding above uh, last, um, last Thursday's low, which is actually in fact a seven month low. But... If it did manage to take out 130, sorry, one spot 3049, it, it could look at taking us back down towards 130 or, or 129. Move to the upside in, in the pound versus the US dollar, it could look at uh, re retesting one spot 3315. And then if we go beyond that, uh, we, we could be looking at targeting this area here uh, of one spot 3472. And then if you go beyond that, the, the risk this red line here, the trending moving average, that'd be the next hurdle to uh, to overcome, which comes into play at one spot thirty five ninety one. Well, that's all for me this week. Thank you very much.